dear students i am mr vishal shah assistant professor krishna institute of pharmacy karad once again welcome you all to this at another session on the polynuclear hydrocarbons in previous video we have finished with the anthracene today we are going to discuss about the our third polynuclear hydrocarbon that is the phenanthrene in this video first we are going to discuss about the methods that are used for the preparation of the phenanthrene and also today we will see the what are the chemical reactions of the phenanthrene now before that just i request you if you are coming first time to this my youtube channel you can subscribe to my youtube channel also you can watch the previous videos related to the pharmaceutical organic chemistry too if you like the content you can share and subscribe to my youtube channel so let's start with our today's session before that just we will see what are the learning outcomes of this session after this session students will be able to explain methods of preparation of anthracene so let's sorry phenanthrene not anthracene now let's see what is the meaning of phenanthrene here you can see this is the structure of phenanthrene where the difference between the anthracene and phenanthrene is that anthracene is considered as the fused ring but it is a linear ring where this phenanthrene is also fused ring but it is a angular because these three benzene rings that are connected they are not present linearly they are present in an angular way so the way by which benzene rings that are present or they are connected in phenanthrene that is only different now in case of phenanthrene whenever you are going to carry out the numbering here say for example if we are going to start with this ring this is the first carbon atom this is the second this is the third this is the fourth from this ring we have to shift to this third ring that is the, this is the fifth sixth seven eight and these two positions are known as the 9 and 10 means similar to the anthracene same way in the same way we are going to carry out the numbering of this phenanthrene also now there are five different resonating structures are possible for the phenanthrene which can be written like this here you can see here this is the first resonating structure that already we have seen over here further what we can do here we can write down we can change the position of double bonds that are present in this particular a ring you can say this is the second resonating structure then we can change the double bonds that are present in the this central ring then we will get the third structure here then we will change the double bonds that are present in the this particular third ring so that we will get this structure and again by rotating the position of double bonds in this particular third ring we will get the fifth resonating structure so we can write down five resonating structures for the phenanthrene now after seeing this introductory part we are going to start with the methods that are used for the preparation of the phenanthrene now first and most important method that is used for the preparation of the phenanthrene is haver process already we know this process that is the haver process how we are going to carry out the synthesis by using the haver process in case of naphthalene we have seen haver process is consisting of five different steps similar five different steps are applicable in the synthesis of phenanthrene also where the first step includes the fiddle crafts acylation now only thing is that we are going to use here the succinic anhydride when and the naphthalene instead of the benzene we are going to use naphthalene as a starting material for the synthesis of the phenanthrene so naphthalene is heated with succinic anhydride in presence of aluminum chloride to yield alpha naphthal propionic acid in case of naphthalene we have used a benzene now instead of that benzene here we are going to use a the naphthalene 
Here you can see that particular this reaction where naphthalene when it is reacted with the succinic anhydride, aluminum chloride is used as a catalyst as it is a friedel crafts acylation reaction and in this case the product that is formed is alpha naphthal propionic acid. Here you can see this is the naphthyl ring. If we connect this carbonyl functional group then it is known as the naphthoyl. This ring is known as the naphthoyl and as here you can see three carbon atoms are there that is why this is known as the propionic acid. So, we will get naphthoyl propionic acid as a product after first step. So, this is the first step that is the friedel crafts acylation. Now, if you remember in case of naphthalene the second step what is now what we want to do this carbonyl functional group needs to be changed to the your alkyl that is the CH2 functional group. So, for that purpose there is need to carry out the reduction and we know that if we want to carry out the reduction of carbonyl to the alkyl we are going to use a Clemson reduction reaction. So, second step in the Haworth process for the synthesis of naphtha, uh, phenanthrin is Clemson reduction. In this alpha naphthyl propionic acid that already generated is treated with amalgamated zinc or you can say zinc amalgam in presence of hydrochloric acid to give a gamma naphthyl butyric acid. Here this is the reaction which displays you how alpha naphthyl propionic acid is converted into naphthyl butyric acid where just what we are going to do this carbonyl functional group is reduced by using zinc amalgam. Zinc amalgam is nothing but the zinc and mercury in presence of hydrochloric acid to give us a naphthyl butyric acid. Now, as here carbonyl functional group is converted into the alkyl functional group then here this is considered as a our acid which is a as four carbon atoms are present that is why here butyric acid. So, propionic acid is converted into a butyric acid and instead of naphthyl we are going to use a naphthyl as a our prefix. So, in this way second step can be performed so that alpha naphthyl propionic acid is converted into the gamma naphthyl butyric acid. After that next step is ring closure reaction. This is the third step where we are going to form the third ring of the phenanthrin. In this case we are going to use a uh, use of H2SO4 that is the dehydration reaction is to be performed where gamma naphthyl butyric acid is heated with sulfuric acid or also you can use polyphosphoric acid to give 1 keto 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin. So, third ring is formed which leads into the formation of 1 keto 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin. Now, if you look at this particular structure here this naphthyl butyric acid when heated with the either H2SO4 that is the sulfuric acid or polyphosphoric acid dehydration reaction will take place uh, hydroxyl group from this carb uh, carboxyl group and hydrogen atom of this carbon atom will combine they will be lost as a water and there will be formation of a bond between this carbon atom and this carbon atom. Now, here you can see there is a presence of the keto functional group at the first position that is why the name is given 1 keto 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin. So, in this way this ring closure reaction is performed. After this next step is again Clemson reduction because here whatever the ketonic functional group that is present at the first position that needs to be converted into the alkyl functional group and for that purpose Clemson reduction is performed. So, second step was also Clemson reduction and fourth step is also Clemson reduction where 1 keto 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin is heated with again zinc amalgam and hydrochloric acid to give us 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin. Phenanthrin. Now, instead of 1 keto, here we are getting 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin, where you can see this reaction 1 keto 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin on reaction with zinc amalgam. This carbonyl group is reduced and it will be converted into the alkyl group. That is, the, this oxygen is removed, which leads into the formation of 1, 2, 3, 4 tetrahydrophenanthrin. And after this, last step is the aromatization reaction where the third ring that is formed which is in the form of the saturated. Now, we have to convert this saturated ring into 
the unsaturated ring so that for that purpose 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrophenanthrene <coughs> is heated with palladium as a catalyst to give us a phenanthrene which leads into the removal of the hydrogen atom and aromatization reaction will take place so 1 2 3 4 tetrahydrophenanthrene when it is heated with palladium as a catalyst it leads into the formation of the phenanthrene in this way this phenanthrene is prepared by using this Averth process where we have utilized five different steps and these steps are nothing but the first step Friedel Crafts acylation, second step is Clemson reduction, third step is ring closure reaction, further next fourth step that we have used is again Clemson reduction and fifth step is aromatization reaction. Once we have finished with the Averth process, next method that is used for the preparation of phenanthrene is from dibenzyl. Now here phenanthrene can be obtained by passing dibenzyl through a red hot tube. Now what is the meaning of dibenzyl? Here you can see benzyl is nothing but C6H5CH2 and as here di stands for the two moles of dibenzyl when they are connected to each other that structure is known as the dibenzyl. Now, if you look at this particular structure, which quite looks like similar to the phenanthrene, just if we connect these two carbon atoms with the covalent bond, then we will get the, our desired structure that is the phenanthrene. So, here just we have to carry out the heating of this particular dibenzyl in a red hot tube, due to which what happens? The hydrogen atoms that are present with that carbon atoms they are removed and due to which there is formation of bond takes place between these two carbon atoms which leads into the formation of this phenanthrene as a structure. So, this is the quite simple method is there where just we have to take a dibenzyl and that should be heated by passing through a red hot tube to get the phenanthrene. So, this is about the second method that is used for the preparation of the phenanthrene. Then last method that is used for the preparation of phenanthrene is from 2 to dimethyl diphenyl. Here this method is also quite similar to earlier method because this dibenzyl and 2 to dimethyl diphenyl they are structurally quite similar. Here just what we have to do phenanthrene can also be obtained by cyclodehydrogenation of 2 to dimethyl diphenyl using sulfur. Here this particular reaction that is shown. Now in earlier case what we have done, these two carbon atoms were connected in the dibenzyl. Now instead of that here, the these two carbon atoms are connected. In previous reaction, we have formed this particular bond, but here already that bond is existing and now we have to connect these two carbon atoms and for that purpose we are going to use a sulfur. So, phenanthrene when is phenanthrene is obtained when cyclo dehydrogenation of the 2 2 dimethyl is dimethyl diphenyl is carried out. So, here this is the diphenyl and dimethyl structure which on cyclo dehydrogenation means cyclo dehydrogenation is nothing but the here we are going to carry out the removal of hydrogen and which leads into the formation of the cycle. That is why this is known as the cyclodehydrogenation and due to which the hydrogen is removed from this carbon atoms or methyl group that leads into the formation of the this phenanthrene. So, these are the various methods that are used for the preparation of the phenanthrene where first method was Haworth process which was consisting of five different steps. Then we have prepared it from the dibenzyl and last we have also prepared it from the 2 2 dimethyl diphenyl which is involves the cyclodehydrogenation reaction. So, that is all about the methods that are used for the preparation of the phenanthrene. So, here you can use this particular question, you can go to the website menti.com, use that code and give the answer for this particular question. Thank you. If you like this particular content, once again I request you please subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the more updates, more videos related to the chemistry. Thank you very much.